Hey guys, I want to share this message with you that the Lord gave me, some scriptures first, how it all wove, woven together. I'm just kind of break them down, but I'm just going to kind of get them out there for you guys to read them and interpret them. It started with Isaiah 19, 8 through 23. Then shortly thereafter, and it was early in the morning prayers about a week ago, it was Matthew 19, 8 through 23. And then just a couple days ago, it was woven into it. The story was Revelations 19, 8 through 21. So I started reading them, of course, and I was praying about it, of course. And the Lord told me what to call it, the state of the union, the state of this country state of this land that we call home. And as I was reading them, the first one was a lot about, you know, just different kind of judgment. And then Matthew was a lot about sin, about marriage, about different types of, of sin involved in the marriage. And then it just got into some depths. And then Revelation was about, you know, him coming back on a white horse. The last judgment, one of the last judgments. But it was about the righteous judgment. And I was like, how does all this tie together, Lord? I've been praying about it. And the reason why I put the scripture on there about choose ye this day whom you shall serve. Is that's what where we're at, guys. It's decision time. I don't, I really don't feel, think, or see in my spirit that because of this election that, the, that we're in the final judgment. I don't, I know it's not time yet, guys. There's still a harvest to be had. And the Lord doesn't want us, he wants us to choose because he doesn't want us to act like the world. How are we going to be that peculiar people, a royal priesthood, his bride? That was part of the Matthew story. The judgment's here, guys, okay? We don't have to be the judge, jury, and the executioner, okay? We've idolized this election garbage, the presidency and all that. That's all you hear about. You hear about the COVID, you hear about the election. Of course, there's plenty of fraud and lies. The lies were based upon sin. I got a preacher on here now that we will have a, a just collide over this argument of the mask. But the reason why I don't isn't because of I, I want people to get sick or any of that. It's because I know what's behind it. It's not conspiracy theory, guys. It's not, even though it's a hidden agenda, it's the lies that are being portrayed over it. Disease, yes, it's real, very real. It's taking people's lives. I still pray for people. I pray for this fireman that was on, on YouTube or Facebook. He lost his little child, two or three years. You know, people are, people are dying over it, yes. I'm not discounting that at all because those lives are important lives to someone that really mattered. Parents, kids, mothers, dads, loved ones. But I've just spent two weeks in the hospital, guys, ground zero, three different emergency rooms. I was there 24 seven. Hospital was full, brimming. A lot, of, a lot of COVID patients. But it wasn't this pandemic that the media has portrayed and the lies that are behind it to shove it down, down our throats, basically. Sorry, guys. Same with this election and all the fraud and the deceit and the lies. Doesn't matter who won, who didn't win. What's God had to say about it? I'm not changing where I stood on this. It is my main, one of my main themes is that it's about life, about the abortion issue, guys innocence that 
support the judgments coming upon this land. Just dispose of a, of a life like it's nothing. So you think that our lives matter? Guys, this is a silly way to say the argument, but, you know, this is kind of where I'm at. It's like, I'll probably have to repent later, honestly. This would be what I would say to a lot of these people that are pro-choice. Aren't you glad that your parents chose life and that you weren't a statistic and an abortion? Because you wouldn't be here to have this lame argument. If it's such a good thing, then why not CNN or Cuomo or whomever some of these yahoos are take us into one, film it. Let's see. Um, you know, I'm just telling you. Okay, so then fast forward it. Does any life matter? And then even this stimulus check, I think the word doesn't even sound good, does it? Does it sit well with you? Man, I don't know if I want that $2,000 or whatever it is, dirty money from the same people that locked us up. Come on, guys. We're arguing and looking at, that's what the enemy wants, is to, to look at all this portrayal of stuff, the lies, so they can bring in fear. Torment, argue, just insane stuff, guys. The church is doing it. People in the church are doing it just as much as the world is. How are we going to be different? How are we going to be the light? We better start choosing, guys. We better start choosing right. We better start choosing God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. Choose ye this day. Judgment's coming. It's here at the door. But so is the harvest, guys. Because Jesus is saying, come on home, guys. That was the part about the bride. When you get married, you want to treat your wife real well. You want to be a special occasion. When my, my wife and I got married, we were, didn't have a lot of money. And so, you know, unfortunately, we didn't have the wedding that neither one of us would have liked to have had. But I still did the best we could with what we had. And then some. We, I wanted to be special. As special as possibly could. Some people that, you know, I was just young. But I wanted that it's how we treat. It's, I think it's how God wants to treat his bride, his children, his chosen, his elect. But it's how he wants us to treat his children. The world. Man, I get it. There's people that's like, man, I don't even, there's no way. Man, well, just use Hitler as an example. You know, he's dead and gone, but would you ever have thought he would have got saved? Probably not. You know, there's people that's like, man, I don't think they're ever going to make it in. But we're not the judge of that. We have to be that light of the world, peculiar. And yeah, yes, it's hard. I get it. Not saying clam up and don't say anything. What I'm saying is pray up. It's God telling you to say, be sure it's Him. Before you open this, I do it too. I'm guilty of it because I'm not, this is not one of my favorite. You, you do it. You say it like this. Man, I've said some stuff that I was like, man, really, Lord? Not a lot, but there's been some time when it's like, man, that was probably an error. I've had to pray, I've had to repent. I had to change some things. Some things I won't change. When I know that it's a constant, it's the Holy Ghost that told me to say it. For God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, or His Word. I'm not, I'm not mealy mouthing back and down on that. I'm not taking back. But also, at the same time, we've got to lose our attitude. Because we've idolized a lot of this stuff. And it's become a mess. Yes, there's plenty of sin in there, plenty of lies. But guys, man, just open your eyes a little bit. Let's go back to the, let's just even take the 2016 election and the presidential debates. Man, what was said at that? A lot of trash was said towards all the different candidates, towards Marco Rubio and Jeb Bush, and all, all the, man, a bunch of way past nonsense, guys. Just really, really vicious, hateful stuff. 
So do we want to be that? Tell the world to get saved and Jesus is covered under the blood of the Lamb and how much love he is and wonderful and gracious and he was gracious to us. I'm not saying we have to tolerate and put up with the people that are lying either. That's not what I'm saying, guys. Because the pendulum could go the other way. It's choose who we're going to serve. Guys, let's take this even a step further into the into the depths of it a little bit. Okay? Because that's what you hear a lot about. Obey the laws of the land and the coronavirus and all this other stuff. Okay, great. Awesome. Well, then go ahead and take Daniel out of the book, out of the Bible. Because he broke the law. He was breaking the law. That's what the king said. You don't worship me. What idol God? Golden... and it changed the nation Miriam man it kill everybody kill them that's all it is today kill abort the babies on demand kill 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 lust of flesh have sex with anybody man woman or beast or whatever and but and and if you have sex with another woman and you don't like the outcome of it then you and he created a life we'll call it a lump. Lump to the dump. Clump to the dump. Throw it away. Come on, guys. These are real life. Rubber meets the road messages. The Lord's trying to show us. Judgment is at the door because we've let it in. It's time to choose, guys. Who are we going to serve? Lust of the flesh, the gods of this world, or the God that created it, the only one God that created this world. It's there from the, the, the foundation of the world. And his son, the blood of the Lamb, and the Holy Ghost, which is the comforter, in his word, which he marked down so we could have a direction. We could actually read that living, breathing word. Yes, it was written by man, inspired by God. So that's where your prayer life comes in. Get a hold of him. Ask him. Don't ask me. Don't ask some other preacher. Don't ask your pastor of your church. Don't ask your wife or another saint. Ask God. Oh, it doesn't hurt to ask. It doesn't hurt to have that accountability at all. You know what I'm saying? You know, and there's some good men and women out there. Yes, you should, you know, take counsel, wise counsel. If it's wise, don't go that other route and say, oh, well, you know, because they didn't agree with me, it's not wise. Take it to God. Jesus, the Holy Ghost and his word. That's where the choosing comes in, guys. Choose ye this day. Choose well. Take it to him. We all have to, guys. That's what I'm saying. You don't have to listen to these to outright, you know, it's just, man, we've idolized this. I'm going to end with this, okay? Long story. Diabetic, and I didn't realize there was a wound in my toe. It was underneath in the bottom, and it got infected. And by the time I got to the hospital, guys, and I looked out, my foot was hurting, and I didn't. It didn't look bad. And then one day it just blew up. I'm going to use this as an example. Probably can't see it, but this is a, a red can. I mean, it was me and my whole, I was all the way up to my, almost to my hip. Red, ugly. My toe was, everything was ugly. Red. Blood red, dark, dark red, seemingly. And the first, I told my wife, I said, I'll be fine. As long as the doctor doesn't come in, the one that was thinking about the surgery and they were talking about it. And it's a long story, but so as long as he didn't come in with a bolt cutter and a hacksaw, I'll be fine. Well, guess what he did? I'm like, dude, you know, long story. But I'm like, no, get rid of the infection first. I want their friend. Made him sit I've sat a week 
I don't know, went to about 60 to 80 bottles of antibiotics, guys, or whatever they are, those big bags. Not the first week, over a two-week period, but, and they just get, I was getting two, two, four, eight a day, you know, up and down. Got towards the end, I was getting them all the time. Some of them were two, three hours long, and they were doubled up and piggybacked, and within a week, it, it died down. I, I released myself against medical advice, Told them no, you're not cutting it all off. They wanted to cut me. Well, let me know you can just push the infection around. I'm gonna wake up and you can say, Oops, sorry, we had to cut your whole leg off below the neck. <clears throat> yes, I had to have the operation. This is where my, my, point, my point is I'm getting to. But we have to get rid of the infection first. And that infection is the sin that we're living in. We let it in, guys. It's masquerading as lies, but it's really sin. It's not just the election that they're lying. It's the coronavirus that they're lying about, or weaponized to destroy us as a country, as a land, as a Christian nation. That's what its main goal is. Why? Because the enemy's behind it. Come on, guys. It's not a uh huh, well, this is not wow, I could have had a V8. That's an old commercial. Any old, old folks probably remember that. Wow, I could have had a V8. Well, I could add Jesus, God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, His Word. Better choose well. Better choose real well. <clears throat> so, we've got to get rid of the infection. And I did go finally have the operation. About this much of my toe, they cut off. The surgeon was great. It was awesome, honestly, for an operation. And nobody wants to have an operation, but I got very, very little peeled off. But the first, first hospital, the first doctor was like, "Man, you're gonna lose your toe. You're gonna lose part of your foot. You just whack." Man, all they were gonna do is push the infection farther up and in, till they had couldn't find a stopping point. Might have been my neck. Cut my head off. I don't know. You know, I'm not a doctor, guys. I'm not trying to be a doctor. I mean, it's, was trying to make a rational decision in an ir irrational moment. Got rid of the infection. But I want to end with this. Because this is what happened. My wife was in the... My wife was praying. She heard the song. While Kennedy's bones lived, they were rattling. The sound of the rattling. It was a song. I... I need to get it from her, but she, she was just crying, and it was just a great song. She said, your bone's going to live. If it's going to live, it's not going to die. Well, the last thing they did when they did this operation, they just cut a little bit of the toe, very little, guys. I'm already walking again. A little bit of a funky, weird shoe, but not even that weird. But first day, I couldn't even get up the steps. Now I'm getting up the steps. I'm driving. I'm, I'm out and about. And it's been maybe 10 days. <sighs> but because I stuck to, stuck to it, and I said, no, get rid of the infection first. And that infection is the sin that's in this land, guys. In people's hearts. Call it what you want. Put slap any kind of label on it. Uh, you want it, sin. That's destroying us as a nation. Whether it's lies, whether it's the abortion issue, whether it's the lust of the flesh, whether it's the lust of the money, the love of the money. And it's not conspiracy theories, guys. It's the truth and the reality. It's the sin within that's destroying us. So choose to get rid of the infection that's destroying us as a nation. Not just because of the election. Been chewing us for a long time, guys. Used to be able to stand and, and pledge allegiance to the flag and pray in school. I was a kid. Man. Now, now you worry about your kids getting shot at school. Alone praying and pledge allegiance, you know. Back when I was a kid, it was just, you know, stupid fist fight stuff, you know, or whatever, you know, or just stupid kid stuff. Some of it was stupid or just, you know, stuff but the sin that infection of the sin 
I'm going to end with this, guys, okay? Did the operation. The surgeon was great. Talked to my wife. Talked to me before. Danced while I was out and asleep or whatever. Way out. Really. Honestly, I felt really way out. Put me under pretty deep. When I woke up, they had talked to my wife for about 10 minutes. You know, everything was great. Cut off, you know, just about, man, a little bit. Very little. My toe could even looks a little ugly, but not real bad. Not, like, not that much is missing. But they snipped a little bit of the bone that was still in the foot. They did took off what they thought was infection to make sure they got below the infection. Took a little bit off and did a biopsy on it. This is how the infectious doctor described it. He said, man, he said they did some really good ex testing at the other hospital to make sure that I had blood flow, sonograms or whatever. He said he was glad because he said no matter how much medicine we put in, he said there's no blood flow. He said, he said your bone doesn't get a lot of blood to begin with in the feet. But if you don't have blood flow, no matter how good the medicine is, no matter how good the word of God is, no matter if your ears are clogged with the lies, your heart's clogged with sin, your mind's cluttered with who won the election, who didn't, listening to the lies that are portrayed. Okay, so can't get in. I need to go back to that thought in a second. So they did the biopsy, took a week. This is how the doctor explained it. I mean, it's like they put it in CLR and they had to dissolve it for a week and get it so that they could cut it and microscopically look at everything to make sure there was no more infection. Came back 100% positive that the surgery was a success because they got, the doctor was awesome. Knew where, how far down to cut it without taking out too much. Did the bare minimal invasive almost and got it. But the first doctor was gonna just, you know, Rip and cut and run, collect a check and run. Pretty much is how I felt. When the guy came in, he didn't even have a doctor's coat on. He felt like it was somebody that just came from a sports bar. And it was, of course, it was Thanksgiving weekend and it was like in the weekend. And so, you know, I mean, he was probably off. So I, I get that, but this was a spirit that I felt in and out and collect the money and run. And no, long story. But you gotta get rid of the infection first. And that's the sin that we're listening to, that we're clouding our mind, that we're polluting. Pick one, pick a variation of it, pick it, pick it. That's why I turned off my TV. But guys, how many of y'all remember this saying? How many of y'all know this saying? Look both ways before you cross the street. Why is it etched in you, up here in your mind? Because your parents said it and said it and repeated it and said it and repeated it and said it and got you to look both ways and stop to do it with my grandkids. I'm like, look both ways. And I, and I tell them two and three times. Check again. Look again. Now they do it. The older ones do it all the time. The younger ones starting to do it. Even the little ones are starting to do it. Why? Because I wanted them to be safe. But I kept reiterating it. Well, that's what the world's doing to us, guys. Reiterating who won the election. Not really over yet, honestly. Is it? And, and everybody's mad. Pick a side. Republicans or Democrats. Man, that, that's another lie. It's all twisted up, guys got to get over ourselves and get over this, past this. I'm not telling you to compromise. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying choose. But the narrative has been to beat us to death. Man, I went to, I have to go to the hospital now and have post-op post checkups and stuff. And it's like, man, I'm so, it's annoying. The questions they ask it. Have you said, been around COVID? Have you been out of the country? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no. No, I'm not wearing a mask. No, I'm not listening to your vain rhetoric, your propaganda. I 
I'm not saying the disease is propaganda, guys. It's a real disease, but it was man-made for one, pretty much, right? Released on us, right? Why? Man, it got pretty twisted up. I mean, it is killing people. It's destroying them. Their lives matter to the people that released it. You know? Guys, come on. It's time to just choose. Pray about it. What's God telling you to do? What's God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word telling you to do? What do you tell Daniel to do? Open your window and pray, dude. Go ahead. God's plan wasn't to save his butt from the lion's den. God's plan was to change the nation, to change the king's evil heart. He was stuck on himself. Pretty much a little bit past that, though, guys. He, you know, and he was rich and had plenty of money. Read that in some of the scriptures I just told you. The rich, about the rich man. The judgments here, guys. Nothing to do with God wants you to have nice things. And you can be wealthy. Possibly. Most of us aren't because there's a reason. Because it'll get in our heart, honestly. But that's just me. That one's free. But, so it's not the money. It's the love of the money. Dude was filthy rich. Gonna make a go. Okay? He wanted everybody to bow down to him. It's so brilliant. And just, man, look around, guys. How this world acts. Movie stars and uh, football players and man, talk about attitudes. I'm gonna end with this. It's one of my favorite things now. I'm gonna get a bumper sticker. I'm plastic up across my forehead, honestly. I won't even use a bumper of a car. It said something to the effect that I don't care if you know the whole Bible and you can quote every scripture. I don't care if you know the Greek meaning and the Hebrew meaning and you read the Dead Sea Scrolls, and you're even the guy that dug them up. If, if you haven't even opened your Bible, and you act like you never read it, and your life portrays that, live your life like you never read it, just read Matthew 20, guys. Read Matthew 21, too. Let the marriage supper of the Lamb. What happened to the people that took it lightly, that didn't choose well? Their outcome wasn't well, either. Read it. Churches don't want to tell you about that. In the Bible, they did not have a very good outcome. The people that chose not to listen to God and ignored Him didn't make it into the marriage supper of the Lamb, guys. Sorry. Love you guys. Choose. Got an opportunity here, guys. A golden opportunity. Turn to Christ. Many of y'all already have. So I'm not preaching the choir. But don't act like the world. Because of some infection in the election. Some infection with CNN. Big box. Tech. Of course they're... Man. If you know what Facebook was doing. Doing. Not sharing all of it. Because some of it I've seen in the spirit. Some of that is just natural. I can see it. Some of it might be me. But, man, they're messing with me. They're jacking with my account. Bad guys. I know they are. But it's irrelevant. Because I already chose. I chose who I'm going to serve. I'm not going to change. I can't. Can't, won't. Don't want to. I mean, 40 years to get here to make some of these decisions. But I'm choose, that's for me and my household. It's for me. I'll start with me. And then my household. We're going to serve you, Lord. As I pray for everybody in my household. I pray for you, too. But look at that video I got out. I'm praying for you. That would be Jesus, your advocate. He is ever present before the throne of God, praying for us. So you think we're not going to win? Nothing to do with this election. You think we're not going to, the outcome's not going to be good? For those that choose life much more abundantly? Of course, absolutely, guys. But you got to choose.
can't sit on the fence, you can't sit on your butt, you can't sit on the, this is game day, you can't sit on the bench. The bench is going to eat you alive. The enemy wants. Love you guys. Choose this day whom you're going to serve. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad. Thank you, Jesus. Love you guys.